Hi, in this video I'll give you a quick introduction to the different versions of OpenSprinkler v3. OpenSprinkler v3 comes with a, several different variants. The first is the classic 24 volt AC version. This comes with an orange terminal block and it should be powered by a 24 volt AC power adapter. If you plan to use your own 24 volt AC power adapter, be sure to check that the output voltage is specified as AC. This kind of adapter is technically also called AC to AC adapter. If you use a multimeter to measure the AC voltage on the two wires of this power adapter, it might be higher than 24. For example, it may be 27 or even as high as 30. This is okay because AC to AC adapters are not regulated, so when there's no load, the voltage can float higher. You should never use any DC power adapter for this controller because it is only designed to work with AC voltage. A DC power adapter can be easily identified by the polarity signs on the label. Next, we have the DC powered open sprinkler which has a black colored power receptor and it should be powered by a DC adapter only. The ideal voltage for this controller is 7.5 volt DC although the controller can work with any voltage in the range of 7.5 to 12 volt DC. We often get questions about what's the differences between the AC powered and the DC powered open sprinklers and how to choose between them. The short answer is that both of them are designed to operate 24 volt AC sprinkler valves like these which you may find in a typical sprinkler system. However, if you have a pump start relay like these ones, these are generally used to start a pump you are better off staying with the AC powered open sprinkler because it's compatible with all pump start relays. On the other hand, the DC powered version is more flexible because its power adapter is much smaller and lighter compared to the 24 volt AC power adapter. Also, the DC adapter is easier to find for international customers. It can also be powered by solar if you want to go off grid. And it can not only operate AC solenoid valves, but also DC valves and DC relays too. The only downside is that it is not compatible with all pump start relays on the market. But there's a workaround. You can always replace these old school pump start relays with one of these more modern solid state relays, which is pretty inexpensive, can drive a powerful pump, and is fully compatible with the DC powered open sprinkler. Lastly, we also have open sprinkler latch indicated by the latch label on the top. This controller is also powered by a DC power adapter, but it's only compatible with latching solenoid valves. So how do you tell if you have latching solenoid valves? There are several ways. One is to look at your existing sprinkler controller, find out its brand name and model number, and check its user manual to see if it's a latching controller or not. Next, you can also look at the label on the valve, which may say latching or latch solenoid. These valves also often come with polarized wires of different colors like one red and one black. Finally, you can use a multimeter to measure the resistance on the two wires of the solenoid. Latching solenoids usually have very low resistance, well below 10 ohm. In contrast, non-latching solenoid valves typically have a resistance above 20 ohm. All versions of Open Sprinkler V3 have built-in Wi-Fi, so they can connect to your existing Wi-Fi router and that way you can use their full sets of features. If needed, they can also function in access point or AP mode, which means they themselves can function as routers, so you can use them without internet. However, certain features such as weather-based watering adjustment will not work if you do not have internet. 
For AC and DC powered open sprinklers, we also provide an additional option of wired Ethernet module, which you can purchase as an optional add-on. This gives the controller wired Ethernet connectivity. For some users, this can provide more reliable connection without worrying about the Wi-Fi signal strength. The controller's hardware interface is as follows. On the top is the LCD screen and three buttons. Then at the bottom, on the very left, is the power pin. If you have an AC-powered open sprinkler, you should insert the two wires from the power adapter into this orange terminal block, tighten the screws, and then insert that into the matching terminal uh, receptor uh, marked power. Then followed from the power pin is a 6-pin terminal block, and these are ground pin, sensor 1, sensor 2, VIN, and then two common wire ports. VIN is actually a 5-volt output pin that is only used to power certain sensors. That's not a common pin, and that should not be connected to the sensor unless if the sensor requires power. So if you have a sensor like a rain sensor or soil moisture sensor or flow sensor, that should generally be plugged between ground and sensor 1 or ground and sensor 2. You should always do the wiring with the controller powered off. Please do not do any wiring while the controller is alive. To wire a sprinkler valve to the controller, generally there is a common wire. So one of the wires from each sprinkler solenoid would go into the common terminal. You can use either of these two because they are the same. And the other wire would go into an individual zone port. If you have multiple zones, it's the same. Generally, one wire from each solenoid goes together into the uh, common uh, port. And then the other wire from each solenoid goes into an individual zone port. You should not use the ground pin for the common wire because on open sprinkler, ground is not the common wire. Next, on the left side of the controller is a 2x5 pin connector. This is the expander connector. If you want to expand the number of zones beyond 8, you can purchase expanders. And each expander adds another 16 zones. At the moment, you can chain up to four expanders. So including the main controller and uh, the four expanders, you can have up to 72 zones in total. To connect the expander, you can simply use the expander cable. One end plugs into the zone expander, the other end plugs into the main controller. If you have multiple expanders, you can use the other connector on the expander to chain together multiple expanders. Open Sprinkler V3 uses what's called I2C or two-wire microchip to implement the expanders. The benefit of this is that it allows you to chain these expanders in any way you want. So these two ports on the expanders are totally symmetric. On the other hand, each expander must have a unique index, and you can set this index by using this so-called dip switch at the back of the expander. So again, each expander must have a unique index for the main controller to tell them apart. Finally, at the top of open sprinkler is a 3-pin connector. And uh, this 3-pin connector is for plugging in a radio frequency transmitter. You can use the radio frequency transmitter to allow Open Sprinkler to talk to certain radio frequency wireless power sockets. This feature is explained in detail in the Open Sprinkler user manual. So this concludes the quick introduction to Open Sprinkler V3 and its various options to help you decide the right version that fits your need. In the next video, I will walk you through the Wi-Fi setup steps and show you the various features of the OpenSprinkler software.